In 2020, the WHO set the 90-70-90 targets aiming to eliminate cervical cancer by 2030. So vaccinate 90% of the girls, they say, screen 70% of women and treat 90% with cervical disease. In South Africa, the National Health Act of 2011 made cancer a reportable disease and mandated the establishment of population-based cancer registries. The National Cervical Cancer Prevention and Control Policy was published in 2017, provisioning all women over the age of 30 years to undergo three free cervical cancer screening that lasts uh, 10 year intervals through the public health sector. Broadly speaking, though, today, 140 countries have introduced HPV vaccine into national immunization programs. For more on this, we're joined now by the WHO's regional lead on vaccine preventable diseases, Dr. Charles Shea Wisonga. Dr. Wisonga, very good evening to you. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. You've uh, probably overheard my conversation with uh, Karen. Well, this is part of your drive as the WHO, but I want to ask you briefly briefly in i don't know if it's safe to say we're in a post-covid environment but what are the stats now given the fact that covid19 did take away a lot of attention and resources from dealing with diseases like uh, cervical cancer yeah thank you so much for uh, having me so the covid19 uh, like you've just said disrupted all essential health services, including uh, vaccination services. And just before I go to that, let me just remind everybody that vaccination is one of the greatest achievements in human history. Vaccination of children prevents four to five million deaths each year. These are children who would have died if they were not vaccinated. And when we add uh, HPV vaccination and all the other new vaccines, we get even a bigger impact. Then going back to your question, during COVID, all uh, health services were impacted in various ways. And uh, HPV vaccination was also one of the ones that was impacted. We have a plan to, by 2030, to have uh, all girls before the age of 15 vaccinated, uh, at least 90% coverage. Uh, but as of now, only 33% of girls uh, on our continent are vaccinated. Mm -hmm. and, and the goal is to have HPV vaccination coverage of girls received at least uh, one dose. Now, given the ambivalence and, and in some cases, absolute rejection of any talk about vaccination, how has this impacted on where the WHO is in terms of its goals? You know, I acknowledge that there is uh, some hesitancy to vaccination, but it is fair to say that in any community, the majority of people want to take vaccines. In Africa, of all the studies that we've done, and others done by independent companies, show that 96% of people in Africa believe that vaccines are important. In any given community, the majority of people accept vaccines. A smaller majority demand vaccines, uh, maybe a bit smaller majority advocate for vaccines. But we know that a significant uh, proportion, be it smaller than the ones who accept, also have uh, concerns about vaccination. And there are others who have a lot of conspiracy theories against uh, vaccines. So to come back to your question, what are we doing then? We need to spread the right information. And we need to ensure that the right information goes through people who are trusted by the communities. We need to engage communities. We need to use health workers who are trusted by the communities. We need to use community leaders who are trusted by the, by the communities. And we need to ensure that everybody has the right information and the information comes from the right sources. Vaccines save lives. Vaccination saves lives. Everybody needs to va be vaccinated right. when you are eligible for the vaccine. So, Dr. Wisong, it's all well and good to talk about vaccination 
access has been something that was lamented by the WHO. And if you look back at past research here in South Africa, black South African women are mostly uninsured and rely on public sector funded health care. But how many countries actually have... Um, you know, or include cervical cancer screening services, radiotherapy for treatment or cervical cancer in their health benefit packages as part of universal health coverage schemes or even at public institutions? Well, it, it is fair to say that we have a lot to do. If we take uh, HPV vaccination, for example, South Africa was one of the first countries that introduced uh, uh, HPV vaccination. We started off by giving to girls who are aged nine years of, uh, uh, of age in grade four. But it has gone now to grade five because we know that by grade five, uh, most of them will already be nine years of age. So that every girl, when they go into public schools in South Africa, for now the public vaccination program is for girls who are in public schools. But also medical aids, they also, you can also access that. In all other African countries, overall in Africa, out of the 47 countries in the WHO African region, 28 of them have already included HPV vaccination in their schedule. There are screening services. Some of them in some areas have more access to this than others. And even treatment services, there are, there's even less access. So that is why we, we need, like Karen told you, a cervical cancer survivor. Mm. The HPV vaccination is our first line of defense. We need to base on that because that is easily available. So as you mentioned, the vaccination of uh, younger girls is one of three targets proposed to achieve the 2030 goal. So now there's a concentration of uh, screening women of age 30 years and older. But I want to find out about HIV, seeing that we are talking about HPV, South Africa having very high levels of that as well. Um, what strategy is in place in such cases? And, and, and how do you weave that into the education drives that you have? And the, what, what we need to do, you know, uh, HPV infection, which leads to cervical cancer, is very common. And uh, about a quarter of all women would get, at any one time will have HPV uh, infection, but it is even higher. About half of more than half of all HIV people living with HIV uh, uh, H, uh, have HPV infection. So the risk for cervical cancer among women living with HIV is six times higher than women who do not have uh, HIV uh, infection. So. We, we, that is why in our vaccination program, we currently recommend girls 9 to 14 years take one dose. But those who are living with HIV need actually to take two doses or even three to be fully protected. 